What's going on, Canes fans? Peter Reese here bringing you another edition of the Canes Insight Podcast. Today, Brad Tejeda and I have a very special guest, Chase Lofton, one of the top tight ends in the country for the 2025 cycle, a guy that Miami visited back in December in his hometown of Omaha, Nebraska. He plans to visit Coral Gables in April, and he's a very intriguing body type, 6'6", 215, great receiving skills, has played a lot of receiver in his time in the game of football, interesting athletic background, played soccer, growing up basketball. So he looks like your modern day athletic tight end who can do more than just block. He admitted himself blocking is something that he's continuing to work on in his game, but had a great conversation with Chase Lofton, which is coming up next. But before that, Wanted to remind you all that this episode is brought to you by Closure Investigative Agency. Is your ex-partner failing to pay child support? You deserve better. Let Closure Investigative Agency help you. Let's go get your money. Background checks, cheating spouses, corporate investigations, insurance investigations, legal investigations, employee theft investigations, domestic services, missing persons, surveillance services, Closure Investigative Agency. Contact them at 561-437-6080 or info at ciagency.net. Five-star Google rated and the entire state of Florida is covered. Coming up next on the Canes Insight Podcast, tight end Chase Lofton discusses his recruitment and his interest in the Hurricanes. All right, Canes fans, excited to be joined now on the Canes Insight Podcast by Chase Lofton, one of the more intriguing tight end prospects in the country, a guy that Miami went to go visit in December, and he's been kind enough to join us on the show today. As his recruitment's blowing up, Chase, welcome on, man. How you doing today? Doing great. I appreciate you saying that. Yeah, man. Look, I mean, you obviously the offers speak for themselves, and it's been a pretty hectic in a good way, I would say, right last month or so for you. So talk a little bit about kind of how this process has shaped up early for you. And obviously your brother has gone through the process. So you've had a firsthand look at, at what goes on in the recruiting process. But for you, what has this last month and a half, two months been like as you finish up your, your junior season and now at Millard South High School? Just talk about what this last month for you. It's definitely been a lot quicker than I expected. You know, like all throughout January, it's just been like, really, it's really been like, you know, talking the whole day through colleges and stuff and them coming in. So um, it, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I try to I try to enjoy the process as much as I can, you know. So, but yeah, my brother definitely prepared me for a lot of it because my brother went through the same process. But, um, you know, just try to be thankful for it all. Yeah, now Chase, man, um, you know, like Peter mentioned, your brother um, obviously went to pro- through the process, plays tight end over at Kansas State. You playing at Omaha, Nebraska, for a lot of fans that are tuning in, a lot of us Kane fans, we're, we're from the Florida area, but from anybody that doesn't isn't aware of Omaha, Nebraska football, what's uh, every day, every Friday night like as far as the atmosphere, as far as a competitive standpoint of Omaha, Nebraska, and kind of what you do on a day-to-day or weekly basis to kind of prepare yourself? Mm. Yeah, believe it or not, things actually do happen in Nebraska. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, football's a pretty big deal. Um, especially when you get to the Class A ball, people take it seriously. So it's a good atmosphere. It's a good environment to play ball. Um, yeah. And Listen, now, I think – Go ahead. I, I was going to say, I, most Canes fans would, would think of, obviously, the College World Series in Omaha. But like you said, there's there's more to it than, than college baseball out there. Yep. <laughs> Go ahead, Brad. And the and the atmosphere and the environment, right? We talk about Omaha, Nebraska, but like like we we just talked about, your recruitment's really picked up, especially in the last ten days. I mean, you being from Omaha, Nebraska, going to visit a place like Miami, Coral Gables, and then you know your recent visit to Alabama here recently in the last couple of days, going from you know one area of the United States to another, and being able to see those different culture environments, just from a, a football standpoint, and also just an environment standpoint. What, what are some of the, the key things that have really, you know, stood out to you throughout this recruitment process so, so far? Yeah, I've definitely been, like, blessed to be able to take those visits and see it all for myself. 
Um, really, everywhere I go, I, I get impressed every time, um, you know, how comfortable it is, new facilities and all that stuff. So um, I've loved it. I've loved traveling. Um, yeah, really going, going all around the country, I see more new things and new technologies that blow my mind every time. So it's been great. Talking a little bit about your play on the field, Chase. 6'6", 215 is what you're listed. I'm sure you've probably grown, you know, since the end of the season, right? And and put some weight on as well. Just talk about that position you play tight end and all that goes into it, right? Because the position's changed a lot over the years. It's not these big, bulky, blocking tight ends so much as athletic guys like you who – have the ability to stretch the field as a receiver. And I'm going to pull up some of your huddle clips here in just a moment, but talk to me about your on-field style and how would you describe yourself as a tight end? For sure. And when people mention like, you know, you know, if I were to say like, I'm a tight end, that can mean one of like a thousand things because the positions change to like um, so much. And I think that um, me as a tight end, my like special abilities is my route running abilities and to create separation to get open. Um, I'm definitely trying to develop my blocking um, and being more of a Y as well. Um, so I can become more of a dynamic player, but um, I think my best is, is, on, is on the route running. And we have your, your clips up here. Talk to me about your, I, I guess your background when it comes to sports, right? Because I'm sure you probably played other things other than, than football growing up. And as we see here in the clips, a lot of, lot of stuff of you out wide, showing your ability there, high pointing the football, creating separation. Uh, but just talk to me about your athletic black background, other sports that you played and kind of how you got to this point. Yeah. So my dad played a uh, college football at Iowa. Um, so I definitely had a little genetic ad advantage there, but, um, I grew up really, my main sport was always soccer when I was growing up. And I thought that was going to be the thing I was going to, you know, try and try and play big time. And I actually ended up quitting football in sixth, sixth grade because I was, I thought I was done with it. Um, and I always loved basketball. I played ba basketball until um, my freshman year. But um, yeah, then I really started after seeing my brother go through the recruitment process and all that stuff. I was like, maybe I should give this a try. Then I, I really fell in love with football and my, my craft and that. So I started to focus on that. This is why the US, U.S. men's national team is, is just ha has its issues, man. We got these athletes like you who are who are quitting and, and going to football. What was your position on, on, on the pitch, man? Talk to me. That, that's it's interesting. You don't hear about as many guys starting in soccer and then transitioning full time to football. I mean, give me give me a breakdown of, of your game on the pitch. Yeah, so I started off. I was more of a um, I was a striker and. Um, and then once, so my middle school team for soccer, we were actually really good. We were ranked like um, top 50 in the nation. That's when I moved to goalie, um, and I was pretty good at that. And I was like, hey, I can, catch, I can catch it pretty well, so go catch some balls of football, you know? Man, they, they pigeonholed those big guys into playing keeper. They, they didn't watch enough of Peter Crouch back in the day. They, they could have <laughs> used a 6'6 striker like you out there. But, uh, no, man, you talk about the basketball background as well. Obviously, a lot of that goes into it. Miami had a pretty good tight end. Jimmy Graham obviously was a basketball player at Miami. Antonio Gates, everyone knows his story as a basketball player as well. I mean, how do you think those skills translate for you to the football field? I think every sport has their different techniques and abilities that um, that go in you know, the sport you're focusing on. So basketball obviously helped me with like, you know, the toughness, being physical, going up and getting the ball and you know, like make a play like that. And soccer, I think, like developed my footwork and like separation abilities and that stuff. So I think it all played a part. Um, but yeah, it's helped a bunch. I'd say that for sure. Now, Chase, we talked a little bit about some of the traits in, in soccer and basketball that's helped you convert into the football field. But we also know with this recruitment process with your dad and obviously your brother going through the recruitment process as well, what are some things that they have personally helped you with through this process? I know, obviously, you know, with any recruiter, any guy we talk to, there's always like a pros and a cons list of what you really look for in any school. What, what are some some things that are really high on your on your radar when it comes to the school that you may choose in the future? Um, I would say the three things that I look for is at first, 
um, you know, a place I walk in, it just feels like home. That's, that's gotta be, it's gotta be how it is. Cause, um, I gotta be happy at the school that I'm playing for and all that. I would say my second thing is the coaching staff that, um, I get along with well, and I think it's going to develop me into an NFL guy because that's the ultimate dream. Right. Um, and the third thing I look for education aspects, you know, stuff after football, that's my top three, like things I look for going into college. Now, obviously, you know, you dipped into soccer, basketball, and obviously here now football. What are some other things you're looking for outside the sporting arena, right? You know, you going to school, what are some things you're, you're looking for after the football field or maybe, you know, a specific major you may be looking in for in the future? Um, I think I'm going to end up in business, but I'm, I'm not like too sure about that yet. It, it very well could change. For sure. And as you know, with college football, man, you know, Head coaches change, players on the team change, and and guys that you're being recruited by change with, with the staff as well. But we know right now, you know, we have some great guys on our staff that are recruiting you. Who are some of the main guys in your recruitment right now um, that are really showing you some love from the University of Miami that, you know, you want to show some recognition to? Yeah, Titans coach, Coach Riddell, he, he's he's our main guy. You know, he comes up, he came up to the school, and um, he's came up twice now. Uh, so I'm really starting to build a relationship with him. Um, I think it was the OC. I've been texting a little bit. Um, I get bad with names, you know, the recruiting process. It's a lot of stuff, but, uh, the Titans coach, definitely. I, I've really been bonding with him for sure. Chase, we saw a clip there at the end of your huddle there. You're, you're punting the ball there. There, there goes the, uh, the soccer background there. I'm going to keep, I'm going to keep bringing it up. <laughs> <Nope>. <laughs> uh, so Chase, I mean, you, in terms of, Looking at a school, like you said, that could help you get to the next level because that is the ultimate goal, obviously. Uh, well, the next next level for you, which would be the NFL. Um, Miami's background and, and their history with tight ends, obviously been dubbed tight end you by many, and, and the track record speaks for itself there. How important is that aspect of it for you? I mean, that you that you know that guys have come out of Miami and done it before, obviously different situations. But does that give you somewhat some confidence, uh, you know, in, in the potential of, of Miami? Absolutely. Um, I, I want to be at a school that utilizes the position, utilizes the tight ends. So uh, seeing that that many players have it and went big time, um, I think it definitely, definitely could help my decision. Go ahead, Brad. Now, Chase, when, now Chase, when, when you're on the football field, obviously your, your size and measurables – kind of overtake themselves, right? But sometimes you line up across the other side of the field and people just have that hunger, that dog mentality within them, right, to really just take it to the next level. There, are, There's obviously moments within a football game that you just have to dig into that inner dog mentality. Well, what what do you describe the word dog and kind of how you bring it to the table as far as on the football field? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I would say, you know, being able to be disciplined and not, you know, not like – skip off plays um you know if you take one play off that's, that's killing your team so keep the same energy even if you're tired um you know keep yeah keep digging in as you said and just keep working your ass off until until the game's over and now when, when it comes to you know the football game obviously the athleticism has a lot to do with it but you also have to be the student of the game what are some things that you do like behind the scenes in the film room to kind of prepare yourself on a week-to-week -week basis when you're playing your opponents yeah, absolutely. I try to watch as much film as I can. Um, you know, see see how the other team's gonna gonna guard me and how they're gonna you know like prepare for our team. Uh, but I try I try and study and learn the game as much as I can. Get prepared for the game week. And as you know, man, we got a lot of great tight ends at Miami here in the past, like Peter said. But you know, there's a lot of good recent tight ends, especially that are playing on Sundays, right? Who are some of the guys you really look up to or model your game after? Um, at Miami. Say that again. Like he said, at Miami, any any tight end, any, any, any tight end, any tight end, in, in general. I would say I definitely look up my brother a lot. Obviously, right? Um, so he's he's taught me so much. Um, and then I look up to the best of all time, Gronk. You know, I, I try out as much as much as I can from him because it doesn't get much better. Um, but yeah, those two. Nice. I thought you were gonna drop a Travis Kelsey there, man. Nah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now lo looking at your recruitment chase obviously we've talked a lot about miami here 
But let's let's talk about some of the other schools that have been involved early. Nebraska as a, as the hometown school, obviously they're in Lincoln, but they're in state. Just talk to me about some of the other schools that have been in early on your recruitment and who you've been talking to uh, the most. Mm -hmm. For the most part, really all my offers have been like I've been keeping up a ton, um, except for the ones that they have like huge coaching staff changes, like head coaches and that stuff. So um, for the most part, I really, they really all did a great job of recruiting me. Um, some, some better than others, but for sure. And definitely Nebraska, as you said, has been on me, I'm not trying to let me get out of the state. Um, but there's been a lot that have done a really good job recruiting me so far. And you recently were at Alabama, correct? Yep. What other visits have you taken other than that one? And what does the, I mean, what does the next few months look like for you? Cause I would imagine you'll be hitting the road here pretty hard. Yeah. So I've been all around the Midwest for the most part. I've been to OU, Iowa state, K state, Nebraska, obviously um, Wisconsin. Um, but yeah, I'll really around the Midwest. Um, I'm trying to get out, out as much as I can. Um, in the March I have in March, I have Texas A&M planned. And then in April I have Miami planned. And I think, there's going to be a few more that are going to come up, um, but th those two for sure are set. There's worse places to be than Miami in April. I'll tell you that much. It's not going to be cold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, last but not least, Chase, before we get you out of here, man, the last question I have for you was, you know, having Coach Woodall come, come see you a couple times in your hometown, you going to visit Miami, like you just mentioned, you're going to be going to Miami again here in April after everything you've already experienced with Miami, um, what are some other things that, you know, either Miami needs to do to kind of be up ahead or just some things that you haven't seen already from Miami that you still haven't been able to experience, or you may have questions about whether it's the, the football facility, uh, the classroom, just anything in general that may still be on your mind that you're looking forward to for your next visit at Miami. Yeah. Well, I know the education is about as good as it gets. Um, but I haven't ever been there, so I don't really, you know, know how much I'm going to like it or, um, you know, I, I don't really know too much about it because I, I haven't seen it for myself yet. And the, the first thing I said, like, does it feel like home? Does it feel like a place that, that I would be happy there? Um, that's my that's my main thing going in. Um, and I'm, I'm sure I see it being a place that I would like or I wouldn't, you know, try to visit there. But, um, yeah, if they if they keep keep recruiting me and stuff and I like it there, it could definitely be a possibility. Chase Lofton, man, great talking to you today. Best of luck as your recruitment. It's going to get crazy, man. It's it's still early. Things have been picking up for you. Um, and I'm, like I said, probably just only the beginning for a guy like you at, at your position. So best of luck to you. Appreciate you again joining the show today. And Canes fans, I, I know by the time April comes around, they will definitely be keyed in on, on your visit when you come down here and just enjoy the process as Brad said. Yep. Thank you guys so much for your time. No problem, man. Enjoy.